Hello friends, again with you our Couture Embroidery Academy Vintage Rose and today our video will continue, we will continue making videos about the embroideries of the uh, famous uh, serial Games of Thrones and in this video we will try to make uh, the embroidery of the House of the Iron. We checked all the embroideries of course we purchased the big book of the costumes of the serial of course and through that book we were looking and checking what exactly we can try to um, remake we can try to maybe make something close to the original of course with the abilities the possibilities that we have and we decided to stop on this bird i will show you closer as you can see we we, we want to make the jacket of it so it's now in in the process of making and uh, we are making the embroidery from the uh, from the dress of the wife of the uh, head of a house what i can tell about this embroidery this embroidery is uh, very peculiar and i can say that rather difficult but it's also done only by the needle because uh, the lunable hook here is not absolutely possible to use because we will use and we will make lots of stamp work as you can see the bird is it has a volume and also we will put lots of metallic threads and cords and also there is no need of a hook so of those who do not know how to work with a hook you can say uh, great because we will have no need to use it we will work only with a needle and you will have to uh, prepare the needle and the hoops or the embroidery frame but since this embroidery is rather big you can see it covers nearly the whole back of the jacket so it's a short jacket till the waist but still it covers the whole back so you will need rather big hoops i think about maybe 50 50 centimeters so i advise you to use the embroidery frame it will be much easier for you to work because you will have the possibility to reach your embroidery from every side of the frame and as you can see we use some kind of a velvet but it's not the velvet fabric actually it's not the original the natural velvet it's the artificial velvet with some kind of a uh, thing inside that prevent velvet to, to get dirt so it can be cleaned very easily and since it's supposed to be the jacket and it, the person who will purchase it he will supposed to wear it outside so it can be dirty in some places it can be very easily cleaned by hand or by the brush uh, by the owner not to give this uh, jacket to the dry clean because since we are using feathers here and some um, materials rather fragile I would worry about giving such things to the dry clean so of course the thing with the hand embroidery that should be cleaned uh, very carefully very attentively and you have to think about before making the embroidery how your um, client will uh, care about the things that he will purchase from you with the embroidery so we use the special um, artificial velvet but you can use of course the ordinary cotton velvet also pay attention that there should be no elastic in it because since we are tampering our fabric there should be no elastic otherwise we'll have no possibility to embroider it correctly cotton velvet cotton linen wool uh, wool for the uh, coats or for the jacket also will work good and also i advise you to think before they making embroidery where you will put your embroidery because if you will make such beautiful looking embroidery on a very short piece of a cloth and you will understand that you have no possibility to put it anywhere i think it will be a pity so think already before making the embroidery where you will locate it what things you can um, use with this embroidery and cut then a piece of a cloth um, that will allow you to cut a part of a pattern if you're planning to do the jacket or the skirt maybe or the bag of, with this embroidery so let's talk about the materials as i told the tools we will use the needle and the embroidery frame for the materials we will need lots of different knitting threads wool again wool tweed mohair threads we'll use the floss threads we'll use lots of metallic threads by the madeira we work ma uh, majority of our embroideries are done by, with the madeira threads because they have the huge variety of colors and uh, different textures and this actually uh, i think the only brand that we use in such in such huge volume so we will work with the absolutely stunning looking um, melange threads and they really look very good here and we will add some feathers and we also will work with artificial leather 
or some vinyl fabric, depending on the, on the things that you have. And we'll add some different sizes of the beads. And as you can see, there will be no sequence. Uh, it's, I think, the first embroidery that we are making and there is no sequence in it at all. And we also will need lots of felt for making the volume, for making the stamp work. So be sure to have the felt in your materials. No matter the size, we use a three millimeter thickness felt, but you can use one millimeter thickness. The only you can, you will make them to put three, four layers to make them volume enough. So what else I can say about this embroidery before we'll start doing it? Uh, I can tell that this is, I think, the, maybe the most, as I told, most peculiar embroidery because it uses lots of different technique and uh, makes such different textures that we never used before and we never did before. I can't say that we didn't know some techniques. Of course, we uh, know lots of different techniques, but we uh, rarely use them. And here we used lots of techniques, very interesting techniques. We understood that what kind of embroidery it can create and what actually I like also in these Games of Thrones embroideries is that they create the embroideries based on the natural look. I mean, if um, the things located close to you, they have more volume on the embroidery and if things located far from you, they are flat, so like in the real life. And these things is very interesting to make because when you look on your embroidery, you immediately understand where the things on the embroidery are located, whether they are far from you or whether they are close to you. So it's a very interesting thing. And it's actually a little bit different from the medieval embroidery. I think you know that in medieval there was no such things as perspective. And uh, people located all the uh, things on the paintings at the same size as as if they were close or far, because there was there was no understanding of this perspective thing. And in this embroidery, it is they have the perspective here. So okay, let's stop talking and let's try to make this embroidery by our own hands. So let's go. This time we will do embroidery from the dresses and from the costumes of the serial Games of Thrones. And the first embroidery that we will do, exactly now that we are doing, is embroidery from the dress of the Lisa Aaron. And uh, at first sight you can think that this is embroidery only of the house of the Aaron. But if you will uh, look attentively, you will see that actually it's a, um, double symbols of the both uh, uh, high, uh, high houses of the Arons and of the Tali, uh, which uh, Lisa is actually the representative of the house of the Tali. And uh, to my mind, it looks same like in uh, Europe history than in aristocratic family. It usually comes person uh, who is maybe above that family or who is very rich and with all symbol of the house and usually uh, the members of the house in which this person came they can add uh, uh, a part of the emblem of the newcomer to show to other people that such important person or such rich person came into our house and make uh, our house more powerful rich and maybe more interesting in uh, the field of the political influence so i think here is the same system and same idea and also to my mind if we are talking about the history of the medieval when people who are uh, used to live in this high hierarchy they usually know how to read the symbols and emblems of the different houses and uh, when they look at the emblem they can understand from uh, what things comes from and which house merit the other house and from what houses usually people came and what are the relative what are the relatives and with whom better to uh, be friend and with whom you can think about having a war so here the same situation we can see the hawk on the front view of the emblem and we might think that it is only the emblem of the Aaron's house but again as I told if you will look attentively you will see small fishes located uh, from the both sides of uh, the hawk and it means that in the house of Aaron's uh, the person from the Talis family uh, the fish is the symbolum, sy symbol of the Talis family a uh, person came into this house and made this house more powerful and maybe more rich. 
uh, if again we will talk about the idea of course we can see the hawk on the front because it's the symbol of a man in this family and in medieval society uh, a man a husband he was uh what to say like the prime minister or the president of the family he was the person who was the most important who was the most powerful and whose uh, ideas and words should be obeyed and fulfilled in any case and the wife usually she was on the second role uh, she was uh, a person who gave birth to kids and she was a person who cares about the uh, amount of children yes and her duty was to produce kids and also to be the support of a husband but still she is on the second role so here we can see the same position the hawk a bird is on the first uh, side on the first scene and the fish is looking like it's behind the hawk or it's uh, on the sides of a hawk but it's not on the first rolls so it shows like the woman she's a second and the man he's the first even though in the book and in the serial the woman actually was uh, at the first role she was the lady regent of overvale when her husband died uh, if we will talk about the uh, birth of the symbols in the games of thrones we can read about the family legend of the of the Arons family when the founder of the Arons clan, Arons house, he um, came to the mountains of the Vale on a huge white hawk and when he landed on the mountain he managed to beat and to defeat the king griffon who was the king of this mountain and after his victory uh, the, the uh, artist Arons, the head of a future house of Arons he uh, said that this lands will be my lands and I will rule at this lands and he became uh, the lord of the mountains, hills and the meadow or whale uh, which actually is now a part of land of the house of iron and after that uh, this white hawk and a moon on a blue uh, in the blue skies is supposed to be the symbol of iron family about the Talis uh, symbol, I was trying to find more information, maybe the same family legend, or maybe I was not reading attentively a book. If you know from, uh, you know the legend of this fish, I would be happy if you would write it in the comments. But uh, I have managed to find only some uh, simple description that fish, um, not actually the fish, the silver salmon uh, the jumping from the river is a symbol of a house of a tally but why exactly the fish i didn't found so i was trying to use my own imagination and uh, the logic and the symbols of uh, the house and try to understand why exactly the fish so if we will see uh, the lands that were ruled by tally this uh, river river lands and as they were uh, uh, described in a book it is very rich lands lots of, with lots of rivers so we can understand it from the name of the river lands with lots of rivers and if uh, the land is full of uh, water and full of rivers it means that uh, soil is uh, can give lots of fruits and lots of uh, vegetables and you will be able to have lots of harvest so it means that these lands, uh, they are rich and the people who live on your lands, they will never feel uh, starving. And fish, if we will see the symbol of a fish itself, also in our culture, I mean in our world culture, it means that fish means that you are, pro you, you are rich, prosperous, that you have, will have lots of money, you will have lots of kids, yes, if you are talking about the woman and those who wanted to give, to have a baby they in medieval they even used to wear the symbol of a fish to help themselves to bear and conceive a child so here i think the same idea since the land of tally lands of tally they were uh, rich and they were so uh, interesting to other houses and other lords and usually at these places there were lots of quarrels and battles uh, so fish usually means that we are rich we are prosperous and we are um, we can 
bring lots of uh, money and power to a family. And usually, uh, and also as I read about uh, them, I mean, I, when I counted the amount of kids that the two daughters of the Tully family produced, they were, if I'm not mistaken, six on both of them. So it means that our daughters also can bring you lots of children. And in the medieval, uh, children, especially when they are men, and uh, um, Tali's daughters, they brought lots of man-child. Uh, it was also a symbol of prosperity because boys were supposed to bring more money and more power to the family. So this, this means that fish also can be the symbol of uh, uh, the prosperity of, girl, of, of girls that will be wed from this family. So it's the idea of the symbol that I was trying to find, but actually if we will talk about the uh, world of uh, Games of Thrones, I think you, you will have read, to my mind, lots of different articles where you might find the idea that author of the Games of Thrones, he was um, interested in European medieval history and he wanted to make uh, something that will be close or will be influenced by this medieval history and also uh, the author himself, he was saying, he agreed with this and he said that he was really interested in medieval history and even used some periods of European history, uh, especially some battles, interesting battles and the periods of um, English history as um, um, interesting pages to use them for his book. So I think for us it will be interesting to see how maybe the people who lived in the Westeros, in this imagined world of George Martin, how they look alike to the people who lived at this period in Europe and in uh, Asia, so in east to west of our world. So we will start uh, from the people of the northern lands. And also if we will talk about the Westeros itself, you might find the idea that Westeros is exactly the, uh, the territory of the British Isles but on, with I Ireland, but turned only upside down because the seashore is nearly the same and the wall of Adrian is located in the same place where the wall from the Games of Thrones also located. And the people who lived in northern lands, they they are very similar to the people who lived at the same period in British Isles. They were also uh, so proud, so open, and uh, they were uh, the people who ruled them. They were not look not looking very different from the people whom they ruled. Uh, the other citizens is the citizens of Iron Islands. Uh, they were supposed to be uh, considered as our uh, our history vikings, people those who was not uh, doing any agricultural work or were not trying to care about the land. They were interested only in raids, and they lived from raid to raid, and. Uh, the only thing they understood and the only thing they cared about was the way of war and the amount of the trophies they will get from these raids and, uh, and all that war things that they did. So we can find this, the same ideas uh, with Vikings from this Ire people of the Iron Lands. About the capital of the Seven Kingdoms, the King's Harbor. Um, it, if we will read about the King's Harbor, it will remind us about the Mediterranean uh, cities and about the uh, early, uh, late Roman Empire and early, maybe early Italy. I will tell it Italy, of course, you understand that Italy uh, appeared in the way we understand it in 19th century, but still, I will call it. It's in Italy for easier for me to explain. And if we will read again about the King's, Har uh, the King's Harbor, we will understand that the, all the beauties and all the culture and everything that will be there will be found only in the Red Castle. And the streets of the city was itself uh, very poor and very smelly and reminded us about the every medieval city uh, that can be found 
in Europe at that time. And I would also tell that if, if you manage to read uh, the description of the Rome that uh, did in 15, 14th, 15th century, you will find the same description as it is done to the King's Harbor because uh, Rome was nearly the same. It was only the Pope's palace that was lavish and beautiful and the other places like streets, uh, they were all full of dirt, uh, different uh, rubbish and all that things. So you can see that lots of citizens of Westeros, they uh, can be found very easily in our history. And it's really very interesting, I think, when you read a fiction book, but it feels like you're reading your own history. So I hope you like the idea of our embroidery uh, serial and I hope to see you in our other embroidery things that we will do. Okay friends, we are done. I hope you all like what we were doing in this video. Maybe some of you will try to follow us and try to make something that we were doing. In case you like the way of the embroidery, you want to create the same embroidery as we do, so you can purchase the pattern of this embroidery and the video lessons of this embroidery located in our YouTube channel on our Etsy link. Uh, the link is located under this video and feel free to purchase and to make the embroidery. Also there will be the list of the materials that we are using exactly in this embroidery and also will be the list of the materials that you can change or the alternative materials that you can use here in case you will find difficult to find something that some peculiar maybe things for you that we are using here. So feel free to purchase our uh, pattern and our uh, video classes and I hope you like the video and I hope to see you in our other videos that will be also dedicated to the serials and movies that we supposed and we are planning to uh, create the embroideries from that videos that we are planning to create. Subscribe to our channel please, uh, push the like button and if you have some comments we will be happy to read them and if you have some questions we will be happy to answer on your questions. So thanks for being with us. See you soon.